What is the impact of AI on startups or organizations in general? You're watching Microsoft Startup AI School, a Microsoft Reactor series of exciting and informative sessions where we introduce you to the basics of Gen AI and show how you can use AI to enhance your creativity, productivity, and efficiency. So hi everyone, I'm Suzanne, a program manager with Microsoft Reactor and your host for the Microsoft Startup AI School series. So we're at the fifth of our series today and we have many more lined up. So let me just drop everyone the link so you can check out our sessions. Yep, and if you have missed our previous four episodes, you can also find them on demand. I'll just drop the link here as well. Right, so today's session is all about um, M ops and how we can unlock the full potential of AI using LLM ops for prompt engineering to production. Such an important topic, and it's no wonder why we have so many people joining us from all around the world today. So you can drop an emoji to tell us where you're joining us from. And on a scale from 1 to 10, I'm curious to know how you would rate your knowledge about today's topic. So let, let us know in the chat. Right. So and today joining us, we have Job. And if you have joined us last week, you probably noticed that he's a familiar face. So Job is a digital specialist at Microsoft Thailand, and he's also a Microsoft certified trainer and a web developer based in Thailand. Very popular amongst the Thai tech community. So let's have him up on screen. Hello. Hi. So Hello. Yep. Welcome so back to Startup. Yep. Welcome back to Startup AI School. So last week you so spoke about data analysis using Microsoft Fabric and Copilot. So how does it feel being back onto the show? Yeah, well, so thank you so much for having me today. Uh, today, because like it's about like application development as well. It's the area that I feel like familiar with. So that's why I came back to talking about it. And it's also like combined with like really trained hot hot topic about the LLM as well. So that's why I came back here to bring you up, you guys to learn about LLM ops. Perfect. Yeah. And um, okay, so just to let you know, like what our um, our viewers are saying. So we have Matthias. Um, he's actually telling it from um, abroad, and his knowledge is about like from a scale of four out of ten. And um, we do have I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm so sorry, but we have like three out of ten here. So I guess everybody is like quite curious to know about this topic. We all know how important it is. So and I do know, Job, that you do have um. You know, a co-speaker for today. Would you like to introduce him, perhaps? Of course, of course. Today we have Oishai. Okay, his name may be like a little bit hard for some people to pronounce his name, but you can call him for short, Oi, just Oi. Oi is the cloud solution architect for data and AI for Microsoft Thailand as well. He really experienced on the machine learning areas, including LLM as well, and he gonna be like really like main speaker, main speaker on the demonstration as well. And why don't bring him up to like greetings to us? Sure, and let's have Moe up onto the screen. Yeah. Sorry, Kap, Moe. Hi, sorry, Kap. A hey, little bit. <laughs> sorry, sorry, say yeah, that again. Yeah, good to see you guys here. Right, yeah. so um, I know that you'll be doing some demos today, right? So um, before we start, maybe we can quickly run through the code of conduct. Um, mm -hmm show it here yeah so in short um we are asking for everyone to be respectful um, we want everyone to be in a safe and welcoming environment and um we welcome you to drop any of your questions and comments in the chat and we'll respond um, respond to them during q and a so with that i guess um job you'll be running the sessions first so i think i will leave you like away and i will leave you um to take it over mm -hmm. of course All right. Okay. So thank you so much for having me today. And hi everyone once again. So we will go back to see why once again on the demo demo part. Today we're gonna learn about all like the pop engineering to the production out with LM ops. So what is LM ops? Is it like kind of like same like dev ops or even LM ops or not? So let's find out. Before we're gonna start our section. We would like to set um, a little bit uh, expectation about this section. So in this section, we're gonna learn about the LM of end-to-end -end process. So in this section, the end process uh, that we're gonna focus is gonna be on the building and evaluation. Later, there the deployment. 
So on the deployment, we may talk a little bit about it. And then we're going to learn about like how to learn, evaluate, and deploy to the Plumfo with the app with the lag based LLM apps to Asia. So actually this section is the continue uh, from the section named build your lag application with Plumfo for the Microsoft AI tool events and for the Microsoft Ignite event as well. We you can learn more about it later for the building application part. All right, so let me jump into our section. So I think during the last year, the world of natural language processing, or you may know uh, the NLP, has witnessed a, a paradigm shift with the advent of the last language model, like GPT-4, with very uh, intelligence. And this model achieved a remarkable performance across a wide variety of the NLP tasks, thanks to their ability to capture and understand the complexity of the human language, as well as their adapt adaptability to different tasks. So let's looking at this paradigm shift, we have moved from the classical ML solutions, where we will use the train, a model with a specific statical algorithm and our own data to deliver the predefined outcome. While the LLM based solution, where we add our own data into the pre trained LLM together with the plum written in the natural language or the human language, and we get the um, generative content outcome. It's clear that such a chain and, and large implication on how we educate the AI capability into the apps, deploy, and, mo and monitor this application. To fully unlock the potential of this pre trained model, it's essential to streamline the deployment and management of these models for the real world application. And that's what we call LLM Ops, which is similar to the concept of ML Ops, but apply the LLMs. So the scale bit is going to be like really same with the ML Ops, but it's going to have like MLM a little bit in it. So the main difference of the LLM Ops and ML Ops can be grouped into the four main points. The first, the first is going to be the target our audience is going to be different. While the ML or we're going to focus on like the data scientists who are going to help us or like analyze the data and model, but LM ops, we're going to focus more on the app developers because the model is already ready, but we need on like education and a little bit guiding. The second is going to be the generated access. It's going to be different as well. The LM, LM of there are big focus on education of model, but in function and non-prediction, but not on the prediction same as on the ML ops. And then it's gonna, it's gonna be the evaluation matrix. It's gonna be different because on the LM ops performance, it measures on the fairness, gowness, token use, usage. While the traditional ML ops, we're gonna e we'll evaluate mainly in terms of the prediction accuracy. And the last one is gonna be the ML model, it's gonna be different. LLM are pre-trained, so we don't build them from the scratch, same as the ML of, because the LLM of is very big and large and use very high computation to do the, the building once again. Let, so we're gonna do is instead with the lag model or even on like the pump injection or even like on the uh, fine tuning, but we still need to concern on like the pop injection, fabrication, and the any harm which we can instinct to the technology. In short term, all this difference required to rethink the whole development workflow in the context of the new requirements we have mentioned. I think it's easy to understand how this application development cycle requires corresponding innovation in tooling the same line to the end-to-end -end development process for the ideation to operation normalization. The AI, the Azure AI platform had been lived through with exactly this requirement in mind. Uh, previously, you may like uh, familiar with the Azure AI Studio, it's the same thing. So the AI Studio is a unified web portal that provides access to thousands of language models, such as 
OpenAI, Meta, or even the hacking phase and more. It's offer data coding with a retrieval uh, augment generation, or you may know as the lag, and it's a palm engineering and evaluation, build in safety and continue at monitoring for language models. With AI Studio, you can quickly and securely go out models on your structure, unstructured, and real-time data. Is it a powerful tool for professional software developers who want to create, deploy, and monitor generative AI application? The AI, Asia AI platform also includes the Pompo that you might have been seen in the previous talk from the Ignite and AI tools. And that it will be using for this section as well in the demo that we're going to show. Pronto is a depth tool designed to streamline the entire development lifecycle of AI apps powered by LLMs. With Pronto, you can create the executable flow that link LLM apps, prompts, and Python function to a visualized graph that we will show is one again in the demo section. But before we move to the demo section, we would like to let you know and understand more on the LLM lifecycle first, because it's gonna be uh, the, the, the biggest thing and the important thing about the LLM ops lifecycle. We have identified three primary loop of the unified effort over actions loop. The first one is gonna, the first loop is gonna be ideation and exploration. This phase is about the experimentations that developer gonna delve into the LLM catalog, aim to the understand how LLM forms engage with data, trying to trying your data with your LLM, LLM up and test what it did with a business hypothesis, seeking the best match for the specific needs. On the a Asia AI, we have a catalog that has a thousand of models for the AI, open AI or even a form open source, such as the llamas, and try with your data. And then we're gonna move to the second loop. It's a building and augmenting. This is where you will be spending most time and in energy. Developer re refine LLM ops, analyze and aligning them to specific enterprise needs, to the patient known as retrieval augment, augment, augmentation generation or lack. They, they link the model to enterprise specific data. Is it an dynamic phase? If output and are not accurate. Developer can go back to the previous loop and do the experimenting. And then we're gonna leave the part and we, we're gonna do like even like by tuning LMMs and their goals and insight, insightful actionable and safe AI solution ready for the real world. Because the most important thing of the develop, developing AI application is making sure that AI application has high quality and evaluation is really core to it. Once you are done, you're gonna move to the next stage, which is operationalization, which is about the, the uh, deployment stage. You're gonna do like uh, about the monitoring, filtering, and we need to ensure the LLM are easily to integrate into the system. The operation safety and any harm content will be filtered out. So it's got so so this T loop is gonna be about the management loop, which focus on the governance and security and compliance as well. It's a framework that's balanced speed in the deliver level with sticks adherence to standards. So a little bit move and zoom in a little bit into the each of loop. For the first loop, we're gonna identify on the uh, business use case, connect leverage data and build a foundation from uh, to the hardest that data effectively. And we and then we're gonna move to the next phase of building. We integrate on our model by learning is against increasing the volume of data, refining our prompts and tools based on the feedback until we start satisfied with the performance leading us to the operationalizing phase where we build, where we uh, deploy the solutions ensure the low bus monitoring and alert system are in place and fully integrate into our business application for real world use. In this section, we, we are go through the whole depth life cycle and we'll more, we more focus on the uh, loop one and loop two. 
later than loop T because loop T is going to be operationalized and deployment, right? So it is one we're going to focus more on the first and the second loop. And today for the demo that we're going to came, came into demo, we use the control so outdoor assistant, which is the visualizing the uh, e-commerce website that's going to set support them on the uh, offering in e-commerce to ask the link the question like what should I buy for my hacking trip to Andalusia or even like to answer them like on like uh, the, the product that they have bought from the e-commerce as a request like I would like to return the things that I bought something like that and this and this application we also do the technical of the lack like all retrieval augment generation uh, architecture with embedding as well. That user is gonna uh, add the question to the application, and the application will query the data from uh, from the cognitive search, uh, what we what we call the AI search on the Azure, and then the AI search we're gonna uh, ask the our model that we use the GPT two uh, GPT two the ADA model to Redefine the the query once again, and then gonna send back the vector, and then it's gonna store in this search index, and then once the once the search index uh found the, the match result, it's gonna return back to the AI search, and AI search will retrieve the data, the will send the the, the the result back to the application that we call retrieve, and then the application will use that data that get from the uh, the search index, they, we, we, we're going to use the augment with the prompt and knowledge sent back to the uh, the LLM model that we use the GPT 3.5 turbo to understand the, uh, the the existing knowledge and prompt for the user. And then the LLM, of, uh, the LLM model will send back the response to the application to answer back to the users. So for more the detail of lack, we will be talking about it later on the uh, how it works. And this is the uh, uh, architecture that we that we apply the like architecture to the our application. So it's gonna be like really uh, uh, similar to the previous slide, right? That we combine the like into the our our uh, control soul chat applications. So in this case, we're gonna use like the GPT two that I mentioned for the equation embedding. And then gonna store the uh, index and data in the AI search, and then AI search will retrieve the data from the uh, existing index and gather the data from the customer database. For the LM like GPT three point five Turbo to combine and answer back to the users. So in the next slide, it's gonna be the uh, demonstration phase, which we will came came into them uh, to demo. Uh, on the plum four part. So, okay, so uh, we'll ask way back to, to the stage. Uh, why are you, you on mute? Okay, guys, now let's come to the demo, right? I think you, you get a rough understanding on how the plum four works. Let's see. Now, let's come to the demo, right? So first thing is that I would like you to understand a little bit on how this prompt flow is being integrated to the IDE. Let's say for the IDE I use, I use the VS Code one, right? So once you uh, load the prompt flow extension to the IDE, the things you're going to see is that you're going to see this logo, right? So from this logo, it means you already got that prompt flow extension to the VS Code, right? Uh, so there are four things I would like you to see. First is that the quick access. This one is being used for create a new flow using the front flow, right? So I can click this quick access to create a new flow like this one, right? And then after that is a flow. This one is going to show how many flow I create in this project, right? So maybe I create a five flow in this project, all of that going to be shown here. After that is a tool. A tool is a a things that we use in the flow, right? So let's see in the right side in this, you can see that I have many components there, right? Each component is the tools component that is mentioning here, right? So there's a tool which I can call the Python, can call the LLM, can 
uh, structure the prompt, right? And uh, before I moving to the next part, I think there's question regarding uh, question regarding the integration of the other model, right? I think it's a model mentioning in the hacking phase, right? So let's say if I understand the question correctly, uh, if you're asking, if you have your own model, how can you integrate that model to this flow, right? So in that scenario, you can use the Python tools to call the API to those model, right? So in this case, it means that you have to deploy that model as an API first. And after that, uh, you write the Python code to call that model using some kind of a template here. Uh, that's how you integrate this kind of flow to other model, right? Okay, now let's going back to our original flow, right? And then uh, the next thing I would like to show is that uh, there will be uh, tools which you can see the history that's being run in your local development, right? So if you click this, you're gonna see all the run that you have done before. And after that, the last part is the connection one, right? This connection one is gonna show how many connections you create, right? So you see that I have many components here in my screen, right? And there are some components that has to be connecting to another things. Let's say I have to connect to the GPT-4, I have to connect to the database, right? Uh, this is where you define your local connection, right? So you can see that it has an Azure OpenAI, it has a custom one, it has an AI Studio search that you can use. Now, that is the things that you're gonna get after you install this extension, right? Now, the next part that I would like to show you is how this uh, prompt for framework works, right? Once you create your flow, your flow is gonna be just a simple YAML file, right? This YAML file, you're gonna define what your environment is, what is your import is, how is the, your output is, some kind of this in a template, right? However, once you install this extension, you will see that there's a button here which you can click once you click it, it's going to visualize what you are defining in the file as a flow like this, right? So with this, it means that you will see, you can structure your input, you can structure your prompt. There can be multiple steps that you done. Maybe you don't, to answer your question, it has to do the prompt engineering part, right? You, you may want to rewrite your question. You may want to do something about your question first before processing it in the further process. So with this tool, it helps you create the flow. It helps you visualize the flow. And the one thing that it helps you is that in each component, let's say you would like to define some prompt to asking the LLM, right? What being shown here is that you can do the versioning of each component. This is independently to each other component, right? So if I have two components here and here, this can have V3 and this can have V2. So it creates a variability of your prompt. You don't have to delete it. You can do the versioning inside each of the box, right? Now, the next part is to explain you what each box is, right? As you can see from the jobs presentation, right? Uh, this one is a demo coming from uh, a prompt flow control so chat, right? Uh, in the scenario which you have a website, this website is a, gonna be a website about asking about things, right? In that website, there are two parts. First part is a website regarding asking a sale question. And another part is asking about customer support question, right? And you would like to design a chatbot to answering those questions. So the component here is first, you define the input that you're gonna take, right? So because you would like to take into account of the customer information, that's how, that's why you need the customer ID part so that you can retrieve this kind of information from your own database, right? 
and then what you need is the chat history so that you know the overall context and then another part is the current question right so now you can define all of the input of this right now let's see the each component of the flow first component is has a component which called customer lookup which this is pretty normal right so what this component do is just gonna retrieve your uh, history so that they know so that the system know what is your previous order is your question is related to any you orders right so you retrieve your previous order to get more context of the customer right and another part is that you're gonna search in your own document right you want to know from this document or from this question, do we have any document that relating to that kind of information, right? So you create this kind of retrieve document box. This one is using the Azure AI search to get that information, right? And after you get all those kinds of informations, you're going to create a prompt, right? You create a prompt to asking the LLM to generate that answer for you using this kind of context. So I will just show you a quick look on that prompt, right? You could see that this, this box is a, a box that I use to formulate the prompt. If I click here, it will show the prompt, right? So you can see that this box is where we're gonna define what is the task that we want the LLM to solve the safety principle that we have, how we're gonna input that kind of document to the prompts, and the instruction of how you want the, the question to be in answers. All of this is gonna be located here. It's gonna be structured here, right? And after this, now you have a full flow, right? You have a flow that has an input, you have a flow that's gonna retrieve information. You have a last box that is gonna use that prompt to call the LLM to get that kind of answer. So this is the overall, some kind of rough demo on how this prompt flow works. It's a framework which help you create this kind of flow structure which, can, that which you can define each of the component is of the part that might be part that you're gonna retrieve information, processing something, uh, structure the prompt, and each of the prompt component box, you can do the versioning on that so that you have uh, variabilities. I think this is kind of a rough demo that I would like to show you guys in this part. So I think uh, that's all the demo in this shot. So I think let's move back to our Stripe presentation jobs. Okay, well, okay. Sorry for came back back late. Yeah, so thank you so much, Oi, for your first demonstration. So um, we just finished for the first loop of the ideation and exploring, right? We just like learn and see how we build the application from the uh, prompt flow, right? And then we are gonna see how the prompt flow visualize your uh your prompt your application, right? So that's what we just we just saw. So we're gonna move to the next dem demo demo of the uh, building and augmenting, which is the another loop that I mentioned that is gonna be really like uh very complex and the most loop that we're gonna spend time a lot and spend a lot uh energy with it because we're gonna learn and try and refine the model and prompt until it's work and we're gonna see okay is it certified or not if not we're gonna go back to the previous loop and we are gonna be like this loop until it works, right? So before we move to the, uh, to the next section, uh, I gonna ask, we, uh, I gonna ask Oi, uh, I'm coming back to uh, explain a little bit on the LMM evaluation as well, okay? So uh, Oi, can, can you come back a little bit on, on this part? Sure. Yeah. 
Okay. One six. So yeah. now you can see that we can use the from flow to define that flow of your work, right? But however, that flow you can see that there is only one input that you can do in a time, right? But actually, in the real application of the works, you have to do kind of the evaluation of many data, right? So you have to know is the equation is being asked is got got a great answer? Is that does that question? Does that answer make sense? Does that answer uh, really went to the question context? That kind of mm. things, right? So I think here's come the part which is a uh, pretty, pretty important in the real world application. However, this kind of evaluation is a little bit different from your your usual traditional ML task, right? Because in your show traditional show traditional ML task. You just gonna have a label, and then you gonna have your data, and you just gonna mm -hmm. evaluate is that answer is, a uh, 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 right, got the right answer correctly to the label being defined. However, for the our task, this task is gonna be answer some kind of a question in in our scenarios is a question being asked on our product, a question being asked on a sales things that what. What then they would like to see? Let's say it's a winter time. What then should I buy? Something like that. So that it doesn't have a right answer or a wrong answer. So we need kind of a new evaluation paradigms, right? Because things shift from before. Because now we don't have a ground truth data that we can use to benchmark. Now we don't have an exactly question or answering pair. Now the question and the answer that you get from the LM they can produce a different kind of harm, right? Because it can hallucinate. It can answer many things that is not real. It can cause something bad to the mm -hmm. uh, recipient of that message. So uh, Microsoft know that limitation. So that Microsoft create a kind of a tool which help you do that evaluation part pretty seamlessly. Now I think let's move to the next part regarding how that tool is gonna help, right? Let's say you can see in my demo, right, that I have already defined the flow that I use. How I gonna get the relevant context, get the relevant con information so that I can use that to answer any question. I have that flow defined. However, now I need to create a batch test data so that I can use that to test how many answer questioning that I got is being right or being wrong. Is it grounded? Uh, is the question, is the answer that I get from the LLM doesn't relate to the question or is it relatable? I have need a way to evaluate that, right? So in this kind of framework, what we're doing that first, we prepare that test data as a JSON out format, right? And after that, we run that as a batch flow. We run that as a batch to our flow that we being defined. And after we run that, we will get the answer of that question, right? And after that, we will run that kind of evaluation part. However, this evaluation part, we're gonna use something powerful like a GPT-4 as a language model to help us set the answer is the answer from the LM is related to the question being asked. Is the answer that being right by the LM is coherent how the grammar it is? Is the answer that I got is relevant to the context of the customer that we retrieve that data from? Some kind of that things. Now. After I mentioning that, I think you guys might be a little bit confused. I think you will see more of those in the demo, right? So now, after I mentioning that, let's show that popular metrics that we mostly use in the LLM that may maybe you guys have seen that before, right? First is the groundness. Is the question that being answered from the LLM is aligned with the information of the source that we retrieve? That's the groundness one. The second is the relevance. 
is the question that we answer is the answer that being generated that is relevant to the question because you know, we know that lm can hallucinate right we want to know that the things that being generated from the lm is relevant to our question or not and the last part you want your question to sound like a human right so maybe you have that coherent metric on how that sounds how that uh, answer being look the grammar something like kind of things like that right now you guys get a rough view on how evaluation uh got pretty different from the super wide traditional ml now mm. i think i would like to show you the demo part on how this guy yeah. is blabbing right now got it got it okay thank you so much Wait, before we move to the demonstration just a little bit summarize on it i think i i, I saw in some like linkage between like ml of and lm ops on the evaluation in the lm uh in the ml of because like do quite manually and like have uh, so many test cases but on the lm we we cannot generate the exactly uh test case but we, we're gonna use the gpt4 to evaluate that part instead of our like manually that's very really interesting so boy let's show us how how do you evaluate this part sure Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Now, before we moving to evil aid part, right? First, as I mentioned in the slide, we have to prepare that test data as a JSON file, right? So now here is the, the, the test question that I try, uh, that I'm being prepared, right? First, I have a, a question regarding a sales thing, right? So this will be things about if you would like something, what is the product you're gonna recommend? Things like that. So it's more like a sale part, right? And then the data that we have, another part is the data regarding the support part. When I mean support part is something like you have bought something and you need some information of the thing you bought, some kind of your exchange return policies, things like that. Now, so you prepare those kind of questions to test the flow that you decide, does it work in that kind of scenario? Does it work in this kind of scenario? Now, once you have this data, right? Now, you would like, first part, as I mentioned, you would like to run this as a batch, right? So in, in prompt flow, locally, you can run that. So you could see my notebook here. What I do, I specify the data that I would like to run here. And then I specify the flow which I decide, right? And after that, I just tell the prompt flow, hey, please run that flow using this kind of data for me, right? And after you done that, now you get your batch answering from all of your questioning that you prepare to test it on, right? You could see it here. As I mentioned, you can come here in the batch run history. You can see that I have that data now. I can click here. I can visualize the result locally. All, of, all this can be done locally without having to do anything with Azure. This can be done with your local flow, right? Now you can see each of the question of it. You could see how it's being run. You could see each element the question of it, you can see it here, right? You can see it here. The question that being asked, the answer that you got, right? So what I would like to show is that now you have your test that are being run using your flow. Now, what you would like to do next? You would like to evaluate. Is this answer is great or is this answer is relevant to your question or not now? What you're gonna do, as we told before, right? We told you that, hey, to do that, you will use the GPT-4 to do that part. And how GPT-4 do that part? By design. So here, I will show you how GPT-4 do that part. It's in here, it's in here, it's in here. Okay, I click this one. So once I click this, so please don't get scary by the flow. It, it looks kind of scary, but it's not that scary, right? 
So you could see that now I create a flow. This flow, what it do? It's gonna evaluate the result that I got, right? So first, let's see the input first. I define what is my question is here. Sorry, here. I define what my question is. I define the context, the relevant context that I got. So this one will be the output from our previous run, right? You could see that in our previous run, we retrieved the context from multiple source, right? And then you see the question and the answer that we got. So this, so this flow is being designed to run after you run that kind of batch test. Now, the interesting part is what I mentioned earlier, instead of using a human to look at each question and say, is this question coherent? Is this question uh, ground without data? Is this question is being relevant to the question I asked? Instead of use a human to do that, you structure the prompt to the LM and let that LM help you evaluate that. So let's see this example, right? Instead of using human to do, you let the LLM like GPT-4 to do that. And then you define what is the metric you would like to do. So in this part, I would like to evaluate on the relevance, right? Is the question being answered is relevant? I define what is good, what is bad. If it's very good, it's got five star. Is it very bad, it got one star. And I also show the LM on the example one, what is good, what is bad, so that it know kind of know from this context, is this a great answer? Is and is this question relevant to my question? Uh, is this answer is being relevant to the question, right? So the key idea is you define the flow, you define the problem to tell the LM how to evaluate your metrics. You create and craft this problem. You prepare some kind of a few short examples so that it know how to score each of your input. And once you we being done that, you create this kind of flow. The great thing is that you doesn't need to just do one things at a time, right? You could see that I, I can do that parallelly. Right? Once I get the input, I define four prompts. First prompt is gonna ask LM to score regarding the cohort part. The second thing is about groundness. It is ground with my data. Is the question being answered is relevant? Now, once I define this flow, the next thing we do is get out test data that we we got from the batch run and run this flow. And to do that, it's very easily to do it here, right? So now, what to do once you define that flow run, right? The next part I'm gonna do. I'm going to define a new flow. I call this multi-flow. I define what the data is being used. In this part, I use the cell data here. And that is all you need, right? You just need the run name, the flow that you're going to use. So I, I use the eval flow. I specify the data is going to use. And I specify the previous run that I done before, right? So it is this one that I run before to get that kind of a best answer, right? And after you specify all of that, you just click run. And then once you clicking that, you will get this kind of result. So you get something like this in the batch history in your uh, development. You will see here that you can uh, see your output. And once you click there, you can click the visualize part. And once you click the visualize part, now it show all of the input you have, how many metric you got for each of the input. The answer to each component is gonna be shown here. Now, you might look that I kind of a little bit struggle, right? Because now I used everything in the uh, IDE. However, not 
only we have to use only the local part, right? We can send this background to the cloud. I mean, Microsoft Prompt Flow Cloud, so that you have everything of your metrics, everything of your log there, and it will be easier to do the visualization part. So allow me to reshare my screen on that part so you get a more idea on how it looks. Okay, now I'm sharing my screen. Now, once I done that, I can run this flow to the cloud, right? And once I send that flow to run on the cloud, what being great on that is that now you can visualize it easily here, right? You could see all of your historical runs. Not only that, you got all the log, right? And the one thing you get more from that is that you could look through each of the answer here, right? So I can click here to see what is the result. It will show all the results of your part, right? And it's kind of easier to visualize here, right? And not only that, what I would like to show you more is on the evaluation part, right? So let's say you now you have one flow, right? The good thing here is that once you have all that being locked, you can compare each result to each other, something like this. And you and once you click there, you can see, hey, from your kind of data, how it got better compared to the before flow. Using this, you can do multiple evaluation. You have all things locked. It's easy, easier to compare the results. I think that's the key idea here that I would like to show. So I think now is all the content that I would like to show on how you do the evaluation part on the prompt flow. Now I think let's jump get get things up back to summarize the key idea here. Okay, thank you so much, Wei. Okay, uh, well, so I think we already see how do we like evaluate the uh, our our plum our uh our like application already. So I think the one thing that we haven't like uh we we already we already see the evaluation results. We can see how do we. Uh, setting up the evaluation process and how do we like running the evaluation on the local and on the cloud? So that is about the second part of the uh, of the building and augmenting. So the next part that we're gonna show us is gonna be on this part or the smallest part here or the satisfied thing because we already got the uh, evaluation already, but we haven't analyzed it yet. In the next in the next part, we're gonna analyze it and trying to figure out what we have to solve and what is the issue on that part. So, yeah, so I will invite Oi back here to continue on what he have there for, for now, because we just like uh, evaluation on that, right? And then we're gonna uh, trying to analyze on, on that evaluation list all. Sure. Okay. So, I think I sharing the wrong screen one. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. so let me share oh, it again. While, while, while you're sharing the screen, uh, actually, maybe uh, I, I saw you have so many phones coming. So actually, you can like, mute it right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take the time. Yep. He really popular here. So I, I would like to say, uh, <laughs> okay. So, okay. So then, okay. Are you ready? Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, okay. as you, yep. Now, let's say that I have all that run here, right? Let's say that I already have multiple eval part, right? And I do that on many data, right? As I show, I have a sales data, I have an data that incorporate both sales and support data. Now, 
I would like to see the result. Let's say if I use the same flow in just kind of a data compared to all variety of data, how does it looks in each of the performance of that, right? So to doing that is pretty easy here, right? To, to do that first, you just open here, you click the, the run that you would like to measure or you would like to compare, right? So let's say in this scenario, I would like to compare out my flow that's run on all the data compared to my flow that run on only the sales data, right? Once I doing that, I just click compare here, right? Once I click compare here, I would, I gonna see all of the metrics, sorry. Uh, do you still see my screen? So now what I would like to show you here is this kind of metric, right? Once I click the comparison one, now it's gonna compare my run with all of the data and my run with just only the sales data, right? And we can see that what we see is that we see that in the sales data, our metric is better, right? We get better performance in that kind of data in compared to all kinds of variety of question. So what I would like to show here is that now because you have the evaluation tools, it's easier for you to track the issue on your flow. Now you got the, now you know that you have some kind of issue in your flow because you, there are a performance difference between some kind of data and those kind of data, right? So now one thing that you're gonna can do is that now you know that in Zelda is performed better compared to all of the data, right? So the things that we develop to solve that issue, right? We create a, a classification flow which gonna classify is this question is being related to the sale or is this question is being related to the support part so that you can split the flow, you decide one flow for the sales, you decide another flow for the support. So because you can evaluate the results, you can create that kind of flow so that uh, you can architect better uh, uh, Gen AI app flow so that it's answering your customer better. That's what we found from analyze this kind of flow. Now, another logs that I would like to show is that you could see that in this kind of runs, right? In this kind of run, there are so many in out question, right? And each of the question doesn't have the same format, right? However, your data, your database is gonna be the same context all the time, same, same format all the time. So, wouldn't it be better if you structure your question a little bit more so that it can, when you are gonna use that to retrieve that information, it kind of have a standardized way to do that. Now, because I know that, I see that kind of trend in my evaluation, in kind of my batch run, I decide a new flow. And in that flow, the difference is very minimal one. What is do is that instead of just asking the question directly and using that to retrieve information, right? So instead of using that, you got your question, right? Then you use that question to get the relevant context. Instead of doing that, you rewrite it again. You rewrite that so that it kind of have the same kind of structure to retrieve so that it's easier to you for you to retrieve that kind of information right and after you in doing that the good part is now you can use the same evaluation flow that you being decide before and once you run that you're gonna see all of this pretty again right now you can click on which run you would like to compare right so in this part, 
Now I have a new one called console support, and I I have an old one called the base one. I I can click that run and visualize the result, right? So now we can have a tools for us to just decide the flow, run that data, see those kind of metrics, locking all of that. I think that's the key idea I would like to show here. Now, I think the information might be overload for you guys, right? So I think uh, let's get the job back to summarize this kind of concepts before we end our session. Oh, sure. Thank you so much, Oi. I think it's very good section on like evaluation, and I think you you may already see that the uh, evaluation result was it, and I think we already see what is our issue, right? Right, and the uh, the issue is about like okay, the performance is degraded with the two board of the task, and and we see and we saw that the uh, the results on the cell data uh, evaluation is is much better when compared to the Another data that we combine uh, and have border data, so that so that that came out with a solution that we need to split out of the chat and the support task, because right now it's just only one uh, chat bot right that is gonna handle on two tasks. So I think we're gonna use the uh, the concept called intent mapping using the LMM to separate to split on that task. And the second issue that the, that we find out is the uh, model need more normalized question. Because the question right now is may not like, okay, it's a question, but sometimes we may need to uh, normalize it or even like to uh, simplify it. So we need to, we need some GPT or e need some AI to, uh, we, call, uh, we call it rewrite the question once again before send back to the LMM to uh, summarize the question, summarize the question for the users. So that is a tool. Uh, evaluation issue is uncovered in the in our application so it's gonna be the last demo of the fixing and un uncover issue so why do you want to go back to uh to show on this part yeah it's gonna be, gonna be a quick one so let me share my screen so now after we uh show that kind of information kind of uh, issue that we saw uh issue that we saw found now we try to fix that issue right so now i'm gonna share my screen again uh sorry a little bit about my one of my screen just shut down so now my face is gonna be look like i'm not looking at the cameras i hope you guys don't smile right so now after we say that hey now we know the problem is that we have to classify that intent first right so now we define a new for which to resolve that kind of issue right so instead of get or run that directly, we create a flow which is gonna classify first on the intent of the question, right? So let's look in here, right? You can see in that prompt, what it's doing is just gonna classify, is this question being related to the support one or is this question being related to the sales one, which we call chat here, right? That's how we solve the first problems. Now, come to the second part on the rewriting the question, right? So now we know that we want to standardize our question. So to doing that, instead of send our question directly to the LLM or to the, to the retrieval part of your flow, what you do there is you create a component which is gonna help you rewrite your question first. If I click here, this component doesn't do much. It's just gonna get your information with my kind of template. And using that template, using that kind of uh, template that I define here, and then run that to rewrite my question to a standardized format, right? Uh, once that being done, everything is the same, right? I think that's how we uncover the issue and then create a new flow which fix the issue. Each flow, you can separate it by the further something like this so that uh, you don't mix it up, right? And each of the component, you can do the versioning as I mentioned before, right? So to 
uh, before we are uh, closing the session, I just would like to show you that kind of uh, versioning that I mentioning about, right? So in here, right, in the customer prompt here, let's say I would like a new template kind of prompt. I can click here. It's called add variant. When I click here, this boop, I will get a new variant which I can define my new template. And this is gonna be a different one from the before, right? So if I change something here, it's not gonna affect my working prompt before, right? So you can explore new things while keeping the old prompt that already work. And you can set, and one thing I'm not being show you guys here is that you can specify which the component you would like your batch to be run at, right? That's another part that help you on the evaluation. I think that's all the demo that I would like to show you guys here. So let's bring job back on the closing part. Sure, of course. So thank you so much, Oi. I think you really enjoy on your demo as well. So because we are going to running out of the time, I'm gonna wrapping up this real quick. So uh, to summarize on this one, I think you may notice on our uh, solution, it's already changed. Uh, this is, is the our like first version of the uh, chat, uh, the Cortoso chat, right? So we just have like the one uh, chat, uh, the one AI to 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 retrieve the data and then uh, send back to the GPT three point five turbo to summarize it and using the customer database to uh, to gather your customer information and send back to the customer. And one we already uh for, for the issue the un uncovered issue on the performance and two broad board model we find out and we separate uh we split the ability of the single uh chat into the two parts the first one is going to be chat and the second one is it's going to be support yeah like this and we're gonna it's it, it, it's going to be like we we clone the solution of each of them but to handle the defense uh Abilities. The first one is going to be like just chat, chat, uh, chat and uh, answer the question back to the, to the customer. And the second one is going to be handle or like some different tasks or the support, something like that. Yep. That is a, our uh, update prompt for rack architecture with intent classifier. So this is what up, uh, we update. To summarize our slide, we use the prompt engineer engineering to break the task into a smaller task to handle a better on a specific task. People ask the same question many different ways. So we need to normalize the question with the context device. That you see that we use the uh, GPT-2, the ADA model to, uh, to rewrite the question to help the GPT better understand on what they ask. And lastly, to create at one endpoint that loot traffic, we add a higher level prompt for that use LLM to classify intents before send back to the proper uh, chat, uh, proper AI. This could be expand to many classes and used to call any type of the endpoint as well. And that's what we trying to uh, implement with our LLM of the transcriptor or LLM ops. So that we already seen in the uh, first loop and second loop. For the third one, because we, we don't have much time to uh, demonstrate on it, I, I can, I gonna like uh, summarize on it real quick. Because the automation is about like use a computer to autom automate on your task, right? That you uh, that you like normally using your, your mouse and keyboard to uh, to click and running the, 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 the flow. But, Fortunately, Microsoft already built the CLI for your automation to run those tasks that I just shown previously. Seen like build, uh, evaluation, compiling, and then deploy. In in the automation world, Microsoft already built the CLI for the Azure to like provision and deploy the application or even design into the application uh, to this resource. And we also have the Azure ML. It's an extension of the Azure CLI that we could uh, ask the machine learning to deploy or even like uh, accelerating the scaling data, something like that. 
by using the MLCLI. And the last one is the newest one. Microsoft just released Pomfo Azure CLI to manage Pomfo resource. Uh, as you see from the previous demonstration, we just click and uh, running it by clicking on a button. But actually, those of them, we can use the CLI. And the CLI can lead to the automation as well. And of course, of, of them is YML, is a YAML file. So that means all of those tasks that you just uh, seen from the uh, demonstration from Uy is already the tech base. It's going to be structured data. So that means all of them, the two automation tools, can understand those tasks automatically and then uh, apply from the CLI above as well. And you and if you go back and trying to clone our uh, repository, you're going to see uh, all of the uh, automation script that we already attached in it. We have the London YAML file for the base run run term, uh to specify the pump flow to understand our structure of, of the uh, pump flow. And we have the run evaluation YAML file for the evaluation, eval, evaluation part as well. And then we also have the uh, YAML script for the deployment on your, your model as well that you can learn it later. So that's, that's what we just talk about the element of to better understanding on this task, you can learn more on this resource that we prepare for you. The first one is gonna be the uh the learning part on the control set. Uh, I saw I saw some people mention in the uh, in the chat that where where we can uh ignite or start to learn about the Gen AI way. So here is a one learning part that really related to the demonstration that we show you today as well. This one I'm really like uh, suggest to you. And the second one is the block that right that they load that they they writing about the control so chat that we demo demo today as well. It's gonna be like really detailed on each of them. If anyone would like to learn how how do we build this demo and how it operate and in in those tasks you may not uh, catch up on what we uh, talking today. You can learn it from here as well. And the last one is gonna be short code of the control so chat that we shown it to to you today that you that I am really highly suggest you to try to clone, to break it, to develop it, to add on on it, and break it once again until it works and until you understand what the code, uh, what what is it, what what is it, and what how it works. So just try it, break it, and test it, and try it once again. Yeah. So that's a, what what the result that we prepare for you. So that's all what we uh, would like to show to you today. So thank you so much for your time to joining us our section. Uh, so me and Oishai gonna, uh, so thank you so much for your time to joining. So Susan, thank you so much. Hi everyone, I added myself back onto this session. Uh, first of all, like, because we're running short on time, so I'm just gonna like speak quite quickly. Um, to you that's watching this session today, if you found this um, helpful, please take time to hit on the like and subscribe button or hit on the no notify button. So as a program manager myself and a producer of this show, this would mean a lot to me and our speakers today. So kudos to our speakers today, Oi and Joe, whose native language isn't English, but delivered this session so smoothly. And Uwe also brought a smile to my face when I saw him swallowing his saliva heart as he was doing his demo. So it's never easy to present in a different, like, um, or non-native language, and I can personally attest to it. So, and also kudos to our speakers who are taking time off from their day-to-day -day work to share their knowledge um, with us. I mean, we all saw how popular Ori was. Like, I think, um, yeah, our speakers deserve a heart. So thank you so much. Um, at the same time, I think um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show what's upcoming. So I'm just, yeah. Okay, um, so we do have um, a session upcoming. It's um, the a panel on the glitz glamour and the grind of an AI startup. So I encourage you to um, watch that where, where we tap into the brains of our three startup founders to hear from them. So be sure to sign um, up on that. I think earlier we had a question from um, our, um, our crowd as well, like our audience today. I think one of the questions was like, how do we get started, right? So I'm also gonna flash this here. Um, it's basically some generate generative AI fundamentals that you can check check out. 
Right. So, um, so yeah, so basically AI Startup School, we have a couple more sessions. I think we have one on app design and development in the Gen AI era. So basically this is with Copilot. I think that's super helpful as well because it will be a game changer in the way you develop applications. So be sure to check that out. Um, yeah, so, okay. So we also have an LLM with multi-model AI. Again, you can find it on the website. Um, finally, yeah, switching gears a little, um, we all know that at Microsoft, our mission is to empower every human um, and organization to achieve more, um, and that includes startups as well. So we want to enable founders to be able to solve world problems, build a better future. So if you have plans to actually, you know, build a product centering around AI or accelerate your AI innovation, this is where you can check out the Microsoft Startup Founders Hub. It's a dynamic um, platform and ecosystem supporting founders like you from um, ideate stage to development, grow and scale. So we're talking about free open AI um, credits up to 150K Azure credits, etc. And we do have experts, you know, around this centering around this ecosystem who can support you as well as, as you assessing third parties tools. So lots of good stuff. And I encourage you to check it out. Um, so, yeah, sorry, I'm like really going fast. Um, so, yeah, we have also included a survey to today's session. So if you could actually help us fill that up, we would greatly appreciate it. Let us know what kind of topics that you're looking for in the comments or be it in the chat. So we know, you know, to work on this as a program manager. I think we um, it's very important that we know what's um, working for you. So we want to hear from you. Yeah, let us know. So, yeah, with that, we conclude today's session. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you, our speakers, for showing up and for delivering such great content. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day.